Hello YouTube. If you have watched my earlier videos on the Excel sample checkbook register, I wanted to announce a new update to that spreadsheet that you might find useful. It now includes a dashboard screen that has uh, multiple charts with a slicer control that I'll demonstrate here in a moment. Uh, a few minor updates to the card debit screen and also some uh, enhancements to the categorization for the register, uh, which helps to drive the new updated dashboard. So let me uh, show you a quick run through here of the new spreadsheet. Uh, you might notice right away, if you've used this before, that there are now uh, three columns devoted to categorization of your uh, withdrawals and deposits. We have a subcategory, category, and type. But don't worry, you don't have to uh, click on all three, and I will demonstrate that here in a moment. Uh, but otherwise, it's, it's still very similar to previous the previous spreadsheet. And we've got you know date column check, description, and then you can key in your withdrawal and deposit amount. So let's say, for example, back in the month of February, I forgot to record my mortgage payment. So I will uh, start putting that in. And let's say that it's uh, just around uh, $1,500. So here in the subcategory column, I'll uh, click in the list here, and I've got an option for mortgage. And as soon as you click it, it just automatically populates that as being a living expense and an expense versus it being an income. Uh, so here in our categories list, you'll definitely want to refine this list to, uh, to your preferences. But you can see that for each subcategory, it's then put into broader categories of transportation or living expenses, discretionary dining out, medical, uh, etc. And of course, you can add uh, additional expenses or delete ones that you don't like out of the list. If you just uh, hit your tab key in this last cell, that'll give you uh, you know some extra rows to to add those uh, back in there. All right, so um, let's talk about the new dashboard. So this dashboard is driven by pivot tables. So if you've watched my videos before, uh, you saw how we had a pivot table that helped to drive the single pie chart of the older version. So we're still doing something similar. I've got a sheet here called pivot tables and this particular pivot table will drive the pie chart. But then I've also got separate pivot tables to help us see totals of expenses by the month or as well as by broader categories and then just uh, some totals there for withdrawals and deposits. So like a typical pivot table, if you've added um, entries into your register, um, you'll want to visit the pivot table analyze menu choice and use the refresh button to make sure that it updates your uh, pivot tables. With that done, when we visit the dashboard screen, we now see a chart to show us the dollar amounts of deposits versus withdrawals expenses by month and again this is just you know some fake information so my my bar charts aren't aren't necessarily as realistic as they uh, ought to be but we also have breakdowns in by the broader categories of discretionary living expenses so forth and then uh, withdrawals further broken down by subcategory so the neat thing is this slicer control Let's say you're just curious about the month of January. So you can just click on the on the January button, and now you're seeing the deposits, withdrawals, expenses, and that pie chart broken down just for that particular month. So uh, it's a dynamic sort of a thing. So as you click on those different months, it automatically changes the, the chart. Now there is a little button here in the, in the corner for clearing the filter. So that uh, shows all of the months again. Or you can also do a... A uh, little click here so that you can decide which months you want to see. So maybe you want to actually see us January, February, and May. So that little button there lets you multi-select particular months. But I'll click that button there to go back and clear the filter so we see um, all of those. Uh, so that's an update to the charting uh, for the spreadsheet register. Lastly, I wanted to show a few minor changes to the card debit uh, sheet. Uh, so this now supports up to um, 
eight credit card or loan balances uh, in here. And also, if you key in a particular name of card, it'll automatically change the title on these bar charts. So for example, I put in capital one, hit enter, and it automatically then reflects that in the title of that particular chart. And let's say that for my capital one, I know that my current balance is around 1200, but uh, the initial or the highest balance I've ever had on it was, uh, say, 1650. So once I've put in those two uh, amounts, then our bar chart reflects uh, that we still owe, you know, uh, over 70% of uh, the highest or initial debt on that card. And then our chart here for debt payoff will let us know our progress on getting all these debts paid off. So for example, let's say that I made a huge deposit to the Capital One card and, and now my balance is down to 400, uh, you'll see that we're getting closer and closer to our, our debt paid off. Okay, so that's a quick run through of this new spreadsheet. One suggestion might be that uh, if you download this here at the beginning of the year, you just start fresh putting in your January, February transactions into the new spreadsheet. However, uh, you can also copy paste your old transactions into the new spreadsheet uh, so that you can then gain the advantages that are here. Uh, if you do it sort of a copy paste, what I would recommend is that in your old spreadsheet that you highlight the uh, date, uh, check, description, withdrawal and deposit values and just, you know, uh, highlight all the way down through your old transactions and then, you know, use the, the copy choice button and then, and then just come into the new spreadsheet and, you know, do a paste and that will get your old transactions from your spreadsheet into the new one here. Thank you for watching. Please consider liking and subscribing for more content in the future.